Among past threats to the Republic, the Great Hyperspace War stands above all other wars in galactic history. In fact, the battle we fight today is in many ways an extension of this same conflict. The Sith Empire we believe we have destroyed in this war has now returned to avenge its defeat. The historical factors that set the stage for the modern conflict bear close examination. I believe the greatest factor of all may have been the way the Republic concluded the Great Hyperspace War. The Great Hyperspace War began at a time when the Republic had enjoyed millennia of peace, growth, and consolidation. In contrast, the Sith Empire was ending its centuries-long adolescent period. Undiscovered by the Republic, the Sith had conquered all of the star systems near Korriban. They were now seeking new opportunities for expansion. At this time, a brutal power struggle had broken out following the death of the Sith ruler. Among the contenders was the Dark Lord Naga Sadao. Whether by chance or destiny, it was at this time that two Republic explorers stumbled onto Korriban. Naga Sadao seized this opportunity to gain political advantage. The explorers were imprisoned as spies, but Naga Sadao staged an attack to liberate the explorers. He left evidence, suggesting the attack was a Republic military operation. Leveraging the widespread fear of an impending Republic invasion, Naga Sadao rallied the Sith to unite behind his cause, a preemptive strike against their newly discovered enemies. Eager for war, the people embraced Naga Sadao as their new ruler. His first act was to launch a vicious assault against the Republic. The Sith armies attacked on several fronts, including Coruscant itself. Naga Sadao commanded all his forces from a meditation sphere suspended over a giant star. The initial onslaught overwhelmed the Republic's unprepared defenses. The Sith Empire's victory was almost assured, but as happened so often, the dark side turned upon itself. Naga Sadao was betrayed by his apprentice. Though the apprentice was defeated, the attack did succeed in breaking Naga Sadao's battle meditation. The tide of the war turned. The Sith were lost without their leader's direction, and the Republic forces soon chased the invaders back to the very doorstep of Naga Sadao's meditation sphere. Recognizing his imminent defeat, the Sith Lord abandoned his forces and started a chain of events to destroy the nearby star and everything in its vicinity. Naga Sadao fled back to Korriban, only to discover renewed opposition to his rule. Civil war broke out, whittling away what was left of the Sith Empire's already weakened armies. Naga Sadao defeated the upstarts, but the Sith were defenseless when the Republic fleet attacked shortly thereafter. As the Republic fleet wiped up what remained of the Sith military, Naga Sadao fled again, this time into permanent exile on Yavin 4. It was at this moment the Republic made what might now be considered a mistake. The Sith no longer posed a threat to the Republic, but the Supreme Chancellor was unsatisfied. Jedi and Republic forces were sent to Korriban and other Sith planets to ensure no remnants of the Sith Empire remained. It was this action which drove the surviving Sith to flee into deep space, with the new Dark Lord who rose to take Naga Sadao's place. The same Dark Lord they continue to call Emperor to this day. I believe this was why he led his people to rebuild their civilization on Drummond Kaz. And this was why they returned 13 centuries later to get revenge against the Republic. One must wonder how things might have been if the Republic had handled the end of the Great Hyperspace War differently. We mustn't forget, though, 
The conflict at the heart of the great hyperspace war and the war we fight today began even before the Sith Empire rose to power. I'll elaborate in the next Hall record.